Last Epoch is a new ARPG created by 11th Hour Games. It was released into early access a couple of years ago, but it just had its big multiplayer update in March 2023. If you've played Diablo, Path of Exiles, Lost Ark, or any other top-down action looting game, you'll be familiar with this sort of gameplay. It has everything here that you're used to, but it does enough differently to make it unique and stand out amongst its competitors. So let's go over everything and discuss if Last Epoch is worth playing in 2023. So this plays out like any other ARPG. You pick your character, you play through a bunch of chapters and story, and then you hit an end game grind where you're leveling up and trying to constantly progress your gear, hunting for that better and better loot. The one really cool thing about Last Epoch that it does differently is an era system where you jump between different time periods and unravel the story going from fighting dinosaurs to giant end of the world void demons. First up, let's talk about the classes. Every ARPG does classes differently, but Last Epoch is really refreshing and unique. The game works a little similar to Lost Ark in that you pick a class and then you pick a subclass. Last Epoch lets you choose three subclasses for every class and there are five classes in the game. So you choose one of the base classes at the beginning of the game and as you progress to around level 20 in the story, you pick your subclass. Some classes are really traditional and I won't go into every single subclass, but there's like a tanky sentinel that can turn into a holy paladin or a void knight. Mage can go down a path of pure sorcerer or be a, a weapon wielding spellblade. Rogue can be a ranged marksman or a blade dancer up close. And then there's two really unique classes, the Primalist, which can be a Druid, a Shaman, or a Beastmaster. This is really cool, serves kind of like a Barbarian with links to nature. And then the Acolyte can be a Warlock, a Necromancer, or a Scythe-wielding Lich. And I've played through a few of these, and they're really, really unique. Overall, the classes are super fun. I played a Primalist and an Acolyte when the game first came out a few years ago. And coming back now, I've gone for a Void Knight and each playstyle has been super, super fun. One of the coolest parts of the game for me is how different these classes are and the different builds you can go through with each class. If you were to just make a Sentinel Void Knight, you could still make a completely different build to somebody else who's gone for a Sentinel Void Knight. And considering that there are, what, 15 different subclasses, which they call Masteries, there is endless possibility for different playstyles here that you could replay this game over and over again and constantly be having a new experience that's fun. So making these classes so unique is either their skills and abilities. So as you progress in Last Epoch, you gain passive abilities. You place passives into your core skills, and once you reach certain thresholds, you unlock new abilities. So you put five passives in, and say you take health and damage and increased uh, fire damage, get to level five in five skill points in, and you can get a new ability. Then once you unlock your subclass around level 20, a certain way through the story, you can then start putting points into your, your mastery passives. So for example, on Void Knight, these powered up the Void abilities, Void Damage, unlocked some of the cooler Void skills, and really made the class its own. That alone is a really, really cool system, and it just lets you have a branching skill tree for all of your passive abilities, which is great. It makes the, the class your own. But what makes this even better is there is a separate skill progression system on top of the passives, where you pick a skill you like and you start leveling that skill. This is then what defines your build. And this is totally different to plus five damage or plus three health. These are completely going to redefine your skills. It is a huge tree, not so big as, say, Path of Exile, but it's a huge tree where you can go down one route and turn a overpowered void spell into something that sucks in enemies and blasts out void damage. Or you can change it to maybe set enemies on fire and spread. And it completely changes the way the skills work. And then if you have, you get five sk skills you can pick and you can respec at any time. But when, if you level these five skills, you can have skills that interact in different ways. Maybe you're going to have a skill that gets you in close and heals you, and then a skill that gets huge damage when you're inside, and then a skill to disengage. Or maybe you're going to try and make a full minion pet build, where you go for five skills, where you can summon as many things as possible, and different things summon different things, and all the skills buff the different summons, and then maybe you take a skill which shields your player because you won't be doing damage yourself. And then you just become some overlord with a huge army of minions. And being able to pick the skills which you want to power up and level up and then um, being able to mix and match them and change them at will makes the game so fun because if you level up a skill to say 15 and you're not feeling it, just respec it into a different skill, try a different skill and you've got a completely new build and it makes the game so fun. So let's talk about the campaign and the gameplay. There's probably less than 10 hours in the campaign, but as with a lot of these games, it's more about what you do at end game and the game truly starts when you finish the story. The story itself is based around the world in the Divine Era, where there are four legendary creatures with incredible powers that are threatened by an ever-powerful void that will take over the world, unless you can go back and change the past. You then time travel across multiple eras trying to save the world. The story is genuinely pretty good and takes you across some really, really cool zones that then form your maps at endgame. 
I think they've done a great job with the story, albeit short, it is incredibly hard. As someone who's played a lot of ARPGs, I died a ton just getting through the stories. Some of the bosses would just stomp on me. And then if you had like two really powerful random mobs out in the world that were together, it was just chaos getting past them. And it would just cause a wall that you really had to level up um, and think hard about beating. There's also side quests as you play this, there's quite a lot. So if you're going in a, in a straight line, the side quest will take you left and right away from your main objective open up new maps, new objectives, new story, and make the game last longer and add quite a lot of content to the game. It's up to you if you just want to zerg straight to end game, or if you want to just take in everything and get all the different things that these side quests give you. But overall, the, the sheer difference in maps, they start out very dark and everything's kind of a void monster. But if you play it long enough and get through that, there are so many open world, really beautiful zones with completely unique creatures. You'll be underwater fighting sea monsters. You'll be in the sky fighting bird monsters. You'll be in the past fighting dinosaurs there's honestly so much and the, the the ability to jump between different eras feels like you're playing four games in one so everything sounds positive let's talk about the end game if you've played something like path of exile the end game here is much shallower the main end game from what i've seen is this branching path system called the monolith of fate you start on an island and you progress outwards into increasingly difficult maps each map has a powerful affix that makes it harder but rewards you with increasingly powerful rewards for example, enemies have 10% more damage, but drop 5% better equipment. And then as you go forward, the affixes are much harder where they have 50% more damage and a boss spawns and they've got 10% extra crit, but you get 40% extra loot and rings drop. So there is a lot of stuff to do here and you can constantly grind and progress and keep pushing this further and further and further. Each zone is basically a new randomized map and a randomized objective such as defeat a boss, destroy certain things, survive waves of enemies, and it keeps the game fun and keeps you playing much longer than the main story. As you progress here, you can also unlock different time zones and power them up, making enemies in the open world and zones scale up all the way to level 100. There's also dungeons, so as you clear different maps of enemies, you'll have keys drop. Clicking the key shows you the dungeon entrance, and then you can select your difficulty level and progress in here for rewards too. Usually it's more of a boss fight situation, all the way up again to level 100. And these again are really hard and challenging. And that's the end game. You chase the loot. There is a scale of different items ranking from trash to legendary. There's craftable items. There's tier sets, which provide amazing boosts. And the noise and feeling of chasing these items is just as much of a rush as any other ARPG. When that green tier set drops, you get that buzz. You can also recraft your loot to have a chance of either improving it or giving it better stats. You can set on gear filters so you can just look out for the best items. There is everything here that a normal ARPG would have, and it's good. It's really good. But overall, as someone who's played Path of Exile, the end game feels very bare. I love the game, I love the classes, but I haven't seen anything else at end game other than what I've just mentioned. It's decent and it's fun, and it will keep you playing different classes, and that's good, but it just feels very shallow when you compare it to say Path of Exile, which is a free game and has about a hundred different end game systems. This does feel very shallow for a £30 game, but this is still early access to be fair to the developers. We're on 0.9 at the time of making this review. I would have expected a little more end games considering I played it a couple of years ago and there's not much more. Have it, another game having more than this game doesn't take anything away from this game, it's still good. But when you compare that I think it's just under £30 on the Steam store, Compared to a free game that has tons more, it's kind of hard to tell you the end game's amazing. Overall, should you play Last Epoch in 2023? If you are a lover of ARPGs and you're still trying to scratch that Diablo itch and you're waiting for Diablo 4 or Path of Exile 2, then this is a fantastic title. It is incredibly polished for a game in early access. The story is super fun and you can play through loads of completely different and unique classes. The ability to create subclasses and abilities give the game tons of replayability. And it's what I've enjoyed most about the game, making new classes, trying new builds, and just having an idea of, I want to be a guy who does this, I want to be a class who does this and has this power, and being able to make that in the game. And it's not as confusing as some of the other ARPGs. It's quite straightforward, it's quite simple, but it's incredibly fun. But if you're looking for a game with a really deep and complex end game, this isn't it, or at least not right now, on its own. And if it's the only game that existed, it's a good game, a great game even. But compared to, I've got to compare it to Path of Exile, which is a free game, this is just a shade of the end game. I do think the game is worth the money. It's a fantastic game, and I think it's worth getting. It is unique enough to stand alone as its own ARPG, and I'm happy I bought it. I can see myself playing it a lot more, making new characters, going through the story again, which is fantastic, but it definitely struggles to compete 
with the huge ARPGs out right now. Path of Exile, Lost Ark, soon to be Diablo 4. But that's it. That's it for the video. I would love to hear what you think in the comments and subscribe for more MMORPG reviews and guides. Let me know what you think. Take care, everybody, and I'll catch you in the next one.